Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day today. Today, we are here to go over Okita's backstory from Requiem of Shogun. The purpose of this video is just in case Wreckers of Ragnarok authors decide not to give Okita a backstory during his round. Now, allow me to explain for a second how all this is relevant. Currently, at the time of this video, Okita, the demon child, is fighting against the sword god Susano. And so far, we've gotten Susano's backstory, but nothing from Okita yet. Usually, we would have both fighters' backstory this far into the match. One plausible explanation is the authors may expect us to read their previous manga, being Requiem of Shogun, to find out more about Okita's past. Now this isn't confirmed, and maybe they will give us the backstory records of Ragnarok, but just in case, I'll provide all we know about his past so far, so that way we have at least something to attach to Okita. With all that explained, let's get into it. It all began in 1851, during the Edo period. Citizens were screaming and running away after seeing a man had been brutally slashed to death. This occurred due to an outlaw who had seemingly lost his mind, pulling his sword out and killing a nearby person. Another swordsman bravely attempted to stop him, but failed, and in mere moments, six lives were lost. The manic outlaw then directs his gaze towards two siblings, one being Okita as a kid and another being his older sister. The outlaw makes his way towards the terrified sister and Okita, while a man that was spectating tells the outlaw to stop. However, the outlaw pays him no heed and raises his blade to kill the two, while the man, knowing he was too far away, desperately tries to intervene. A moment later, everyone gives a shocked expression, not able to believe that a kid was capable of taking a life so brutally. As the outlaw bleeds out from his neck and tries to stop it, Okita approaches him and delivers several more brutal stabs to his chest, while giving a cold but hate-fueled expression. The citizens nearby are so terrified by what they're seeing, they refer to him as a demon child, and even his own sister can't stand to look at him. The man attempted to help stop Okita and states that's enough. Okita calms down and turns to check on his sister, but instead of relief, he is met with terror. She's so terrified of Okita and screams to not touch her. Confused and heartbroken, Okita stood there feeling the weight of the crowd's judgment. All witnesses began to feel fear, suspicion, and curiosity upon seeing Okita's action, while his sister only saw him as a monster now. Yet, in that moment of isolation, one person laughed and smiled, and it was the same man that tried to help earlier, revealing himself as Kondo. Later that night, Kondo brings Okita with him to his home and his father. His father questions what Kondo's plan for the demon child is, and Kondo states he will raise Okita because he believes Okita is very strong, extremely kind, and all he needs is someone to train him to unlock his true potential. Upon hearing such heartfelt words, Okita begins to cry and is very grateful to have met Kondo, highlighting that even with his strength, Okita was actually just a lonely child that was shunned and ignored by everyone constantly. Moved by Okita's reaction and Kondo's reason, his father allows Okita to stay and Kondo offers Okita something to eat. At the age of nine, he embarked on his journey as a disciple in Kondo's training hall, a journey that would shape him into the warrior he was destined to become. And that's all we have to his backstory as a child. He does have a couple battles in Requiem of Shogun, but I'd say his most important battle was in that same chapter where he battled against a man named Serizawa Kamo, someone who was responsible for even creating the Shin Sengumi. During the battle, Okita managed to hold his own against Serizawa, even disarming him at one point and setting up for a finishing blow. However, due to this, he let his guard down, and Serizawa seized the opportunity, striking Okita over the head with a rock, leaving him with a concussion. 
Before Serizawa delivers the finishing blow, Kondo comes in to stop him and offers him a favor to spare Okita's life. Serizawa calls it even and this marks his first defeat ever. Deeply ashamed and feeling he had brought disgrace upon Kondo, Okita vowed never to lose again. To my knowledge, he actually never did lose again after this. The only last piece of info we have from Rekuyomo Shogun is a non-English chapter where Okita is depicted drawing his final breath, succumbing to what is presumed to be tuberculosis. As he passes away, an apparition of Kondo, who is also presumed to be dead by this point, appears to comfort him in his final moments. And as we know, Okita ends up joining as a wreck of the Ragnarok fighter later on. Now we're done. If you notice, Okita also made the same I won't lose statement when asking Brunhilde to fight his match. So let's see if he stays true to that promise and is able to defeat Susano. It's also ironic because both times in battle where Okita nearly died is literally when he was about to finish off his opponent, let his guard down and got caught by his opponent's last minute counterattack. Anyways, Hopefully this provides some decent insight into Okita's past. If the author chooses to go with his backstory and for some reason it's not why I went over here, then you have the right to count this video as filler and throw it into the abyss. I'd also recommend reading The Requiem of Shogun yourself if you ever get the chance. It's by the same people who made Wreckers of Ragnarok and does seem like a decent manga. The only thing is, it's only English translated up to chapter 15. So yeah, have fun with that. I'll include a link to where you can read all 15 English chapters in the description below. So have fun with that if you decide to go read it. It is good and I think you should give it a try. If there are any facts you'd also like to add about Okita, then express it in the comments below and let me know if hearing his backstory makes you want to root for Okita more or are you still on Susano's side? Y'all know me, I'm Team Okita all the way and this backstory has me with him more than ever. But anyways, that's all I have to say for today. Stay safe out there and be good people. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.